Uh, I want to text me 35192 for that, alancockshow.com, for everything else. If you want to watch the show, you can do it there. Listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. If you do that from out of state, let me know where that happens. Uh, Cavaliers lose against Brooklyn last night by two points. Oh, that was a heartbreaker. 108 to 106 is the final there. Uh, they will play again tomorrow night. They're at home for a minute, so they're going to play the Orlando Magic at the Romo Fijo tomorrow night. That's a 7 o'clock tip. Uh, you will hear all of it here on WMMS. Uh, this is our last live show this week. Uh, there will be a sum of show on Friday, I think, tomorrow and Thanksgiving Day. They're playing music in place of this show, just FYI. But then oh, we'll even we... tomorrow they're playing music? I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I've, I've only done one sum of show for Friday, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, when uh, we return on Monday, I will have all the info for you on uh, joining us for our last show of the year, which is going to be the Alan Cox Show 10th Anniversary Special, which will happen on Monday, December the 16th. And I will tell you where that's going to be, where you can come out and join us. We've got some guests that are going to be coming by. We're just going to have, I don't, I, you know, I've been talking to our promotions department about this for a while, and I said, I'm fine with this not being some explosive spectacle. I just want to do the show, celebrate 10 years, have some friends come by, uh, have some pops, and uh, that'll be the that'll be the end of the year for no 2019. No pyro? No what? Pyrotechnics? Maybe pie. No pyro. No there may fire, be pie there. Flames feel free to bring pyrotechnics. Fireworks? Yeah, feel free to bring pyrotechnics. Is that the right word? Fireworks? Pyrotechnics? Sure, yes. <laughs> Is that even a word? I yes. don't know. Yes, yes. <laughs> You just but, want it um, to be a chill. Oh, uh, and we have no we budget. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Yeah, pyro is very expensive. Uh, I got a lighter. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that counts. Sparklers? But I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate the thoughts. Uh, so December 16th will be the last show of the year. And then we'll return on January the something. A second, right? Yeah, we're off longer than I like to be, but it's just the way the calendar uh, works out. December, or, I'm sorry, January the 6th. Oh, uh, will be our first show of 2020. It'll be the same night that PBS airs Dave Chappelle receiving the Mark Twain Prize for comedy. So, you know, I'll tell you what I like to do after a big long holiday break. That is long. I like to take that first day back uh, as a sick day. I call hey, in sick. There you go. <laughs> I'm just really not feeling it, guys. I know I've had three weeks off. <laughs> guys, I've only had 15 days to really decompress. You said our first day back will be January 6th? January the 6th. Okay. The 6th? Of 2020. The si- yeah, that's because New Year's is in the middle of the week. It's like a weird a calendar Wednesday. this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanksgiving's right. late. Um, yeah, I, I normally don't like taking off any more than two weeks at a time. You don't want to come back on and do that Thursday, Friday? No, but okay. it's uh, <laughs> it's no. the end of the year. Who cares? You yeah. know what I mean? It's uh, Who cares? So... Um, no one will miss me. It'll be fine. We'll come back January the 6th. So three uh, weeks off. <laughs> we'll run a fantastic spate of some of shows mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've already, I'm already laying them out, and they're going to be resplendent in their hilarity. I'm telling you. So while we are gone over the holiday break, and you're doing things with your family and your friends and all that, you know, because everybody's already running around anyway doing mm-hmm. holiday stuff. So it's not like I'm sitting on my ass at home, which is what I'd right. like to do for three weeks. It's running around and doing Chasing things. a toddler. And- yeah. <laughs> We're hitting the road tomorrow morning to go see my family for Thanksgiving. How long are you going to be there? A couple of days. Yeah. By the way, one of my the whitest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> one of my neighbors goes, oh, are you having the uh, police uh, keep an eye on your house while you're gone? And I go, no. Have they seen the plot of Home Alone? Well, he goes, he goes, yeah, that's... Yeah, they could be fake cops. And then what? Joe Pesci's in your house. All of a sudden, the wet bandits take you for all you got. Uh, do we even have tar? And you're not leaving your kid at home to defend the place. Right. He goes, this is... <laughs> I'm just waiting. He goes, uh, this is something that our local police department where we live provides. And I go, that is the whitest goddamn thing I've ever heard in my life. I go... <laughs> when I lived in Ohio City, I could have used that right. for five years. Yeah. Wasn't like Cleveland PD was not going to be everything cool, you guys are gone. <laughs> I've lived in a lot of neighborhoods where that would have been a fantastic service to provide. Not where I live now. No. Not worried about it now. <laughs> but thanks. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you. You're going to be sorry if you don't use it and you come back oh. and you're wiped out. <laughs> Nobody knows where I live. I mean, it's not, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was like, really? That's you a have thing? have cake be your house sitter while you're gone. <gasps> I'm going to be gone. He's gone. He's in San Diego. I'm not. 
He's, ta- he's tasting the whale's vagina. Oh, there you go. American. He's tasting the city. Tasting the city. You know what, though? I kind of want to spend some time in my own apartment. But I'll go over and check. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be like, hey, Alexa, how is everything? Who's and keeping your like, dog? It's totally Alexa. great. <laughs> What's that? Who's keeping your dog? Ah, I don't know. I'll put some water out for her. <laughs> um, no, the mother-in-law. I'll watch the, watch the dog. Be fine. So, uh, yeah, but that was, I'm like, boy, I've never heard of that before. That's never the, heard the of that only before. thing I thought of was Home Alone. I don't think I've ever had. And I never heard of that actually happening. Right. And even in that movie, it's not even real cops. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's not. It's not like so. So what's because really I've never seen it. What's the premise never of that? Seen thing? Home Alone. Home Alone. I'm a grown man. Classic what, Christmas. Um, no. Um, oh. Christmas movies begin begin and end with me with Scrooge. Um, You're being kind of Scrooge right now. No, no, I'm anti Home Alone. I'm talk. not anti Christmas. I've just never seen. I'm not anti Home Alone. It's a really good never movie. seen the movie. Um, so the premise is they forget the kid. So they go on vacation. And Pesci and Stern pretend to be policemen at the very beginning. No, they come just by. Pesci. Joe Pesci comes by at the yeah. very beginning of the movie, and he's like, "Hey, we just want to, you know, just see what you guys are doing. There's a lot of you. Here's some precautions you can take, but really, he's like scoping out the place. Oh, they're case in and the neighborhood, and he's getting information on we, when each family will be out of town. Town but so they, they don't can come back and rob them, and then they don't realize that the kid is home. Correct. And then he sets because, of course, he sets a series of elaborate booby traps. Correct. After he finds out what these guys are doing, yes. Yeah. When the family comes back home, mm-hmm. isn't the house destroyed? No, he cleans up. He's very responsible. He cleans mm-hmm. up paint. I've, again, I've seen enough There's clips. No paint right? can. Kind of build, yeah. yeah, it's just They're, a paint can. He that keeps he gets them hit. closed. Oh. Yeah. They're just used for blunt force trauma. I Correct. see. Yeah. He doesn't use them so that they slip around. No. Ah. Yeah. Now okay. there's well, another movie. He, he steps in, on the Christmas ornaments when he comes in. He's barefoot, sweeping. but like, they, that's yeah, not that's not bad. A uh, well, Roomba will take care of that. Well, they didn't have Roombas back then. <laughs> you don't know. They, did, I do they know. They were rich. They were the McAllisters. It was 1990. Are, they hadn't been invented yet. But if we're finding <laughs> Twinkies in dinosaur poop, yeah, there, there been might a have been Roombas <laughs> in Will Met. Where was that? So all those John Hughes movies were set in all of the very Tony North Shore. I was like, uh, it's Chicago, Chicago suburbs. Yeah. yeah, all the very wealthy. Uh, uh, people living in those suburbs. Now, when you go to New York with Kevin, that's where things get messy. Yes, because Trump was, shows up. Mm, Actually, little, yes, a bit, yes, for one second. Yeah, like and you can uh, order a pizza with a voice changer and use your dad's and, credit card. Right, but they, when he sets up all the booby traps, he goes to his uncle's house that's under that they're renovating, and he trashes this place. There's paint spilled all over the place. He's he's making the floor all slippery. He does a lot. Although he does tar paper. Uh, shingles to the stairs. Yeah. So that's that's not the easiest thing to clean no, up. No, I mean if you do what are those like a not a razor, an exacto knife? Get in there with that. Exacto knife. Sure. Box yeah. Not the yeah, box cutter. Not how you want to spend your Christmas I'm vacation. Sure. Yeah, well, if you're year old alone. Knows how to do that. I will say I do love having seen neither of them. I do love that they went back to the we forgot our kid well. This one, how does he escape? He's lost in They're New York. In France, he lost in New York. I think. They right. didn't forget they, him. Oh. There was a mix up at the airport. Obviously, and he that makes it manifest itself. How? Well, he 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 is trying to put some batteries into a tape recorder that he has. Well, bottom line is and they're negligent parents. No, no, no. They're busy. There's a no. lot of kids There's... and people that they're traveling with, like twenty extended family members. It's a and lot it's to easy do. Easy to lose one. Right. And That's when you have to be diligent in counting heads. They Never count all the heads. heads. And the There's... neighbor kid is on the bus in the yeah. first one, and they yeah. count his head like he's Kevin. I see. And then mm-hmm. the neighbor kid gets off the bus with his. Stupid a lot of, yo-yo. Yeah, a lot of things go just right and just wrong enough at oh, the same time. He can end up okay. not being able to get on the. So plane. they set it up properly. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that was uh, Catherine O'Hara was a fox back then. Oh, she, I mean, she still Kevin! looks and she's so funny. Looks pretty good now yeah. on Shit's Creek. And but she I mean, also you know. sells a concerned mom quite well. Oh, just the like, panic, the like, sheer panic, the sheer panic, like everything that she does and like the little speeches she gives. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get home to my son. Kevin, mm-hmm. do you have children? Like mm-hmm. all, everything. Like she's so fantastic. And then when in that she's movie. just panicked, she's looking around. She's like, "Hello, hello, hello!" Like, <laughs> but I suspect the thing at the airport. I suspect that she's the most frustrated with herself because she yes. has once again proven herself to be a negligent mother. <laughs> and, and there's yeah, an so incredible quick, scene. The subtext John of the Candy. film has got to be that, right? Here's a spoiler alert for anyone who has, also hasn't seen uh, Home Alone. <laughs> <Spoiler> <laughs> in 1990s, <laughs> Home Alone. Yes. Uh, it's I, about to be 30 years old. What always caught me up was at the end of the movie, so she, the mom is like going crazy, trying to, she goes through all these things. She mm-hmm. travels with a polka band in the back of a van to get home to her son on time. And at the end of the movie, she walks in and like reunites with him in like 
two minutes later, the rest of the family walks in the house. Uh-huh. And I'm like, if you would have just stayed at the airport like everybody else. Well, that's the whole thing. Like, that's what the dad says. Like, the early. flight that you don't wait want to wait for. Yeah, right. that's fine. It just made me laugh that she put herself through all that trauma and then they come walking in like 30 seconds mm-hmm. later. I was like, that would make me well, that's, so mad. That's if I was dad there. logic versus mom logic. Like, dad logic's like, well, if I can't get there, I can't get there, but I'm not going to make myself uncomfortable. <laughs> right. And mom's like, I have to get home to my son, Kevin. And I'll do not, whatever I can. Whatever it takes. And she and puts herself through hell to get there. And the dad's just like, he just waltzes man, in it's like... raining in France. This is a bummer. <laughs> and the actor who plays the dad's dead now. John Hurt, I believe, He's is dead? dead. Yeah, he was on The Sopranos for a minute. Yeah. yeah. He did a bunch of things. But yeah, I think he, I think he has since died. He was always weirdly attractive to me. Oh, yeah? I don't think he's like a, a traditionally good-looking guy, but I don't know. I was like, eh, You were attracted to Dilf, Dilf vibes for something you? Something about that face yeah. I liked. To his yeah. gruffness, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't think he was that gruff. At least in those movies, he he's was tall. He's always playing a cop or somebody tall. in charge. I don't think he was tall. Uh, Alan, on the subject of Pound Cake's dinosaurs class, I took a class at Ohio State called How to Avoid Dying from Cancer. No. Well, there you go. There's a there's a class called Death and Dying. Like uh, I think uh, pre med majors take it. Oh, so. I took Death and Dying as part of my yeah. philosophy track. But anyway. I mean that's different than how to avoid. That's <laughs> strangely specific. Yeah. How to avoid dying from cancer. Don't like, stop staring at the microwave. Here's the syllabus. Yeah. All right. right. Uh, take care of yourself. Five uh, nine. Um, Huh? He's five nine. He's only five nine. Why does this happen to me all the time? <laughs> Every time I like someone and I don't, whether it's from the internet crush or an Instagram follower, I'm like, man, this guy's hot. And then I meet him and he's five seven. <laughs> That's all influencers for you. I'm sorry. They are. They're all they're, so short. They're all yeah. I'm only five two. I shouldn't bitch, but yeah, he's still got seven inches on you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody texted me that they met you last night and said she was taller than I thought she. I be. had on about six inch heels. Last oh, okay. Night. I was gonna say. I mean, if. You only see Mary sitting down on the show. <laughs> That's not how tall she is. She's seated. Yeah. Uh, Usually yeah. when I'm out, I'll have uh, heels on. But yeah, my the ones I wore yesterday were pretty, really big uh, pretty ones, obnoxious. Yeah. They were yeah, they were tall. Yeah, they're her combat boots. My that combat also have a oh, six inch heel on it. And who said? Cody uh, Cooper. Oh, you know, they said look like some of the disgruntled clown would wear. Which is just an old, he's like a, a booker, road, yeah. road booker, and he yeah. wears he dresses up like a clown. I think yeah. disgruntled clown is somewhat redundant too. Yeah. I mean, you can be a, a happy clown. No, yeah. no, no, not if you're doing it professionally. Mm-hmm. Something's gone terribly wrong. Yeah. If you're yeah, uh, Alan, who is the girl that Bill was making out with last night? Uh, <laughs> uh I believe that'd be your mom. Hey. <laughs> I see what he did. Oh, <laughs> about I see it. what called, he did. That's called classic misdirection. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know the answer. Yeah, I know the answer. It's I the same tell. girl I've been making out with for a while, but like, it's on again. On. Are you? Uh, <laughs> it's a casual. Are you thing. pleading the Fifth Amendment? I don't know. I don't. Her name's Sam. Like, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> It certainly sounds like it's also movie. the one, the girl that I was making out. You were with doing this publicly at, in front of a lot of people who are now he, texting me. He actually, did, he Cambria. did it on stage. Actually, he called her up. And <laughs> yeah, I said, show. "All right, this is how I'm going to open my set tonight." He's like, "Real uh-huh. quick, guys, tell mm-hmm. me if you're into this." And then, and then the and crowd like one of those real like tonguey ones. <laughs> 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 they did it into the microphone. Wait, do that again like, so I can use it for the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> your Oh, uh, that's uh, the girl that I went to Coheed with when Mary got me Coheed tickets in for my February. birthday. February, yeah. yeah, so it's been a minute. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know who that is. I, yes, I don't, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. She was on the bus Polar with Blast. us. Polar Blast. She came to Polar Blast with Still us. Still don't know who that is. We were drinking out of a banana flask. You don't oh, remember on the that? bus. Yeah. yeah. Can't place her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. But I'll take your word for it. Yeah. All right. Just if people are asking me questions... I certainly like to get to the bottom of it, mm-hmm. you know? I thought maybe this was some new fish no. that you were working on Old uh, fish. getting up to Swifle <laughs> Tower now that everything is kind well, of... She's been there. Has she been... Oh, did she christen Sk- Swipe the whatever? <laughs> Swifle Tower? Uh, we didn't... Uh. Uh, she's been sick, so we didn't... Uh, she just came over. So did it is she, unchristened. It's unchristened at the moment. <sighs> What'd she think of that LED fireplace? She hasn't been there since that's been put together. <laughs> <laughs> she so came no over when he just had a mattress on the ground. Mattress on the ground. Mattress on the ground. Looking like a fool with your mattress on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No. Um, no. Hey, Record Store Day, by the way, is this Friday when everybody else is uh, flipping their lid over Black Friday. Remember that Record Store Day, Black Friday, if you care about vinyl, I know that a lot of people do. They're dropping a lot of things that have been previously unavailable on that format, some old, some new. 
Uh, Cardi B's Gangsta Bitch oh, Music Volume I've One is going to be available. Uh, Lizzo's Coconut Oil EP. She's I so might good. snag that, honestly. I love Lizzo. You want to grab like that? Every time um, I sing Lizzo, my sister reminds me that I am not Lizzo, and it is upsetting. Well, two or three of you might be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, um, Pearl Jam will uh, release their first ever vinyl version of their MTV Unplugged set, which has got to be 25 years old by now. A whole bunch of Jack White uh, vinyl will drop. That's so rare for him. I know. It is very rare. <laughs> Usually he deals primarily in cassettes and eight tracks. <laughs> if he like writes a check or anything, it's vinyl. Yeah. Like he, everything he does is vinyl. <laughs> A vinyl check. <laughs> yeah. You play it backwards yeah, you, if it bounces. You, you, <laughs> you take it home, you have to listen to it. I owe you six dollars and thirty-five cents. Read my mail, I'm here. All right. I'm gonna return this. You know, we had Corey Roddick on the show last week when uh Motley Crue announced that hey, we know it's only been four years, but the farewell tour changed their mind. We're going back out on the road and blah blah blah. And we assumed that Corey Roddick um, would be very, very excited, and he was. We talked to him about it briefly. But there's been a lot of backpedaling, as you might suspect, in the Motley Crue camp at that time. Obviously, they were really trying to uh, drive home the notion that they would never tour again. That was how they sold you farewell tour tickets. Is they go, if you want to see us, you got to see us, because this is never going to happen again. We're going our separate ways. Not even four years later, they've announced that they're going to go out. And so there's been some backpedaling. But I have a feeling that it might be a very short tour, because they want a guarantee of $3.5 million per stop Whoa! on well, the reunion tour. And if you just came off a farewell That's tour, you better get or reunion Vince Neal for that. <laughs> Always paying three and a half millions for fat Vince Neil. That's got to kill your sales, man. If you were like, not only just four years ago or whatever, but like, what's never going to happen again? Get him now. Because I'd be, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, ah, the only reason why I bought those tickets is because I never thought I was going to see you again. Not only that, but Vince Neil already had book. He already had dates booked. Next yeah. next week, I'm giving away Vince Neil tickets. Mm-hmm. Doing all the Motley Crue hits. So I don't know how that's going to work with these guys going out on the road. If he's out doing the songs and then they go out. But classic frontman, you know, just doing his own thing. And maybe this is a little uh, little canary in a coal mine to see how much money they can get. Three and a half million dollars is so much <laughs> per stop. That's insane. By the way, so maybe they just don't want to do that many dates. Maybe they just need, or money. maybe they will. Maybe they will. The, well, the movie did a good a bit of press for them, and. I think they'll get what they want. Right, but the movie, it's, not, it's not just them either. It's them and Def Leppard and, and Poison. Poison. And like that is and hair metal's pretty big right now. I'm like, just saying, a whole new generation of people into hair metal. I'm just saying that if you if, if you like Motley Crue, you watch the dirt. It wasn't like it brought in new Motley Crue fans. I, I think I, it did. Really? Yeah. Because of who they cast to play the members of the band. I mean, I'm not saying it brought in. Tens of millions of new fans, but it got new, them new Probably fans. Probably ten, I'd say. Ten yeah. new fans. Yeah. Tens of twenties. Well, tens Man, at least. It, tens of tens. It's something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ten seconds their way through it. And there's a lot of people that they have a generational thing where their parents like this music and they grew up listening to it, so that's they'll, they'll go see it. I mean, would you ever go to a ba- a band that your parents loved? No. Yeah. If you I mean, I I I, I mean, absolutely. If, if your parents loved Motley Crue. Yes. And you go, I'm going to go see Motley Crue with my mom and dad. Knowing full well that like when they dug them the first time around. They like, were way better. Well, no, I, I don't mean the band. I mean your parents. They were like drunk, your dad's elbow deep in your mom. Like oh the whole God. thing. That's what I'm saying. You know? like, it's a completely different experience. So like my mom, uh, she was really into Pink Floyd, but she saw Pink Floyd when they were big and around. And one year uh, I got tickets to like a cover band. And I was like, hey, let's go do this for your birthday. And we did. And she was a good sport about it. And I had a good time. Loved the music. And I was like, did you like it? And she goes, it was okay. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I saw the real Pink Floyd. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need to see it 20 years later from a cover band. Don't you know need to what see I mean? Laser Floyd. Exactly. Right. But I mean, and I know it's the same band, but if they saw them in their prime, like you said, when they're dating and everything's new and fun, like, it's not even going to compare. Mm-hmm. You bring up a good point, though. The real victims in these reunion tours are the cover bands, because those are the people who need the money, okay? There's a great movie, and I've mentioned it before, but there's a great movie from years ago. It's probably 15 years old by now, and I think it might be hard to find, but it was a documentary called Tribute. And it followed four or five tribute bands around. So there were guys that were going as Kiss, 
There was a Judas Priest tribute band. There was a Queen tribute band. There, I forget what the other... There was a Monkees tribute band. I bet you Corey Roddick has seen this film. It's called Tribute. And the best part of the movie is them talking to the individual members of the bands, and they're so racked with existential whatever, they're like... I don't know where I begin in Gene Simmons' <laughs> ends. Oh, my God. I mean, it was fan-goddamn-tastic, if you'll pardon the pun. You know what, though? They, like, feel that way. That's very honest. That they, they actually truly are like, I am... Because they throw themselves I am, into so deep, yeah. yeah. I oh, it's like Gene an actor Simmons. throwing themselves like, into yeah. a role. Yeah. When, yeah. A couple of the guys, like, ended up killing themselves down the road because yeah, they, they couldn't just get, can't get it out. Was there a Kurt Cobain cover band? Nirvana? <laughs> but, I mean, so the one guy, yeah, there was the Kiss and all that, but... They had a the band, I think the Queen cover band was called Sheer Heart Attack, right? After one of the Queen albums. And I'm like, okay, uh, I mean, listen, if you're going to be Gene Simmons, guy can't really sing, not exactly the world's greatest bass player. It's all spectacle, right? If you're going to be the front man for a Queen cover band and you're going to be the Freddie Mercury, mm-hmm. that's heavy duty, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you can find that movie, it's fantastic. But those are the bands that need the money. My well, crew don't need the money. You don't know that. What would your cover band be? If, you were if you're like a, fake if you're, Vince Neil, you need the money. If you're <laughs> a tribute true. band, what band would it be and what would you name it? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> a tribute band? What What would I? Yeah. Oh, boy, I don't know. Probably I'd do a Medeski, Martin, and Wood tribute band. Oh, yeah, those guys. Yeah, those guys. No, way to go with they, something that we can all relate they to. Needed, they need uh, to come back. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's your, what about you? What's your... uh, it'd probably be a John Mayer cover band. It'd yeah. be John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> John Mayer. John Mayer uh-huh. would be what it is. Uh, and you get to sing all the songs called, about yourself. It would be called My Body is yeah, a Wonderland. My Body is yes. a Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> what's uh, yours? Uh, I'd probably go with uh, Coheed and Cambria. Yeah. And... Uh, Bill Heed and Cambria. Yeah, Bill Co- Heed and Cam- yeah. Billia. I like Bill Heed. Okay, Bill Heed. Bill yeah. Heed. <laughs> just, just Bill Heed. Yeah. Right. Pound cake? Pound slice. Who's that? What is that? Who are you covering? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be a cover band of his own band mm-hmm. that doesn't exist I'm yet. I'm going to hire somebody <laughs> to be me and go out on tour so I can stay at home and re- He is developing quite the body of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good.